Welcome everyone! In this video I will show you how to create this 2D teleporting effect with Unity's Shader Graph. You can change the color and the intensity easily via script and it works for normal as well as animated sprites. Since Shader Graph is still new to most people, I will go through the steps in detail and try to explain as much as possible. So let's get started! This video is sponsored by strawmattress.com. Go back to the woods and nature with a real straw mattress. I sleep on a straw mattress all the time and it greatly helps me to reduce the weakening effects of modern life. I feel a lot more like a real man and my back barely hurts. Strawmattress.com provides the greatest variety of straw mattresses anywhere on the internet, starting at as little as $1.99. If you order your straw mattress right now and enter the bonus code GAMEDEVSHACK, you get a free bag of loose straw. You can stick it in your hipster beard so people will know that you slept on a real straw mattress and respect you more. Ok, back to the video. I'm using Unity version 2019.4.2 and shows the 2D template, which means that we still have to configure it a bit, but that's faster than choosing the universal render pipeline template and configuring that for 2D. First of all, we need to bring in the universal render pipeline, which is simply done through the package manager. When it is installed, right click in your assets and choose rendering pipeline asset. That creates the asset and also a renderer. This one is for 3D though, so let's delete it and create a 2D renderer. Then click the pipeline asset and assign the newly created 2D renderer. And lastly, the game needs to use that pipeline asset. So on Edit, Project Settings, Graphics, we can assign the pipeline asset. Now right click in your assets folder and choose Shader, Sprite Graph, Unlit. While we edit, we can also right click the shader and then choose to create a material. That way it is using the newly created shader. Lastly, it is quite useful to have a sprite to work with, so I import my roster man. Right now he appears completely black because the default material is 2D lit, which means it is expecting a light source that we don't have. When we assign the material we just created, we get an error message because the shader has no default texture assigned. So let's open it up and get started on that. By the way, I'm using shift and space to maximize the window. First, let's create a texture, call it whatever you want, but make sure to call the reference exactly as it is written here, because that tells Unity to use the sprite that is assigned in the sprite renderer. Now drag in the texture and create a node called Sample Texture 2D. For now, we just grab the color and assign it to the final node. And now our shader is working fine, so we can start messing around with effects. We can also use a default texture in the shader editor and make sure to set the preview to Quad. In my case that didn't work because of some bug, but after entering play mode it worked fine. The only thing we're going to change is the alpha. So let's make a combine node and pass in the red, green and blue channel directly from our texture and the out of the combine node into the final output. The alpha will be determined by noise. So add a simple noise node and multiply its output with the alpha, which we then plug into the final node. Right now every pixel has a different alpha value ranging from anywhere between 0 to 255. But it would be much better if it's either 0 or full. So we use a step node to filter our noise. Any value below the threshold will pass through and count as full. We can already see the effects starting to happen when moving the slider. But now it would be nicer if there was some vertical progress to it. For that we can take advantage of the UV. The UV map of the sprite starts in the left bottom corner at 0 and the maximum amount is 1. So if you have ever done 3D modeling you already know that, but for 2D artists this might be unfamiliar. So now we can bring uh, in the UV node and split it to get the Y value which is the second one. We can use that as our threshold. Unfortunately now we lose control over it, but if we add a multiply node we can adjust it and we still have kind of a slider here. Right 
Right now the effect is flipped though, because we want it the other way around. So there's an easy workaround. Just negate the output, which means multiplying by minus 1 and add 1. As you can see, it gets kind of hard to get the highest pixels to become opaque, because the UV values there are getting pretty close to zero. To solve that, we can simply add a bit more than 1, say 1.1. Now we should add some color, and the color should appear just before the pixels become fully opaque. For that we can simply take the output from the noise and put it in another step function, and this one also takes the flipped UV as the threshold, but we will deduct a tiny bit from it, say 0.25. Then we take the output from the original step function, the one that controls the alpha, and subtract the new step function. As you can see, the result is opaque pixels that are always a bit above the originals. We can take those pixels now and add them on top of the final output, simply by adding them. To make sure they only appear where the original sprite is, we take that alpha and multiply it. And of course, pure white looks kinda boring, so we can multiply them with a color. If you want cool effects, then set the color mode to HDR, because that gives you the option to also set its intensity. And then just play around with it to see which color and intensity fits best. Later on we're going to add some bloom, so that will give like a, a bit more of a glowing effect. There are two things we want to control from the editor, the color and the progress of the teleport. So right click the color and choose convert to property and also create a vector1, which is a fancy word for float, and call it progress. And lastly, use that float to determine the input of the step functions. That is it for the shader, just click save asset and go back to Unity. When we choose the material, we can control the color and progress. But to make things look a bit nicer, I drag in a background I randomly pulled off the internet. And to make the shader really pop, post-processing can help with that. If you also started with a 2D template, you first need to install it through the package manager. Then the camera as well as the pipeline asset need to be able to use post-processing, which is just a checkbox. In your scene, create a global volume and create a new profile. Now you can add stuff. I chose blue, which is one of the coolest effects for lighting, because it simulates your HDR colors actually emitting light. And then just play around with the color intensity and the bloom intensity to find something that works for you. Also don't be an idiot like me, I kept jacking up the intensity of the color and was wondering why it isn't working, while I had the intensity of the bloom set to zero. Okay, this is it. I hope you learned something. Let me know if you have any kind of feedback, suggestions or questions. Also, subscribing to this channel would really help me out. Thank you and goodbye.